But there's a new development on actor Alec Baldwin. He could once again face manslaughter charges related to that movie Rust that he was a big part of and the fatal shooting of the film's cinematographer Helena Hutchins. After a report found the gun used in her death would only fire if the trigger had actually been pulled. Involuntary manslaughter charges against Alec Baldwin were dismissed back in April. He has maintained that he did not pull the trigger, that the gun went off on its own during the filming of Rust. The new report found that the actor's gun had not been modified during the production either. Let's bring in Dina Dahl, law and crime legal analyst. Dina, good to see you as always. Uh, your thoughts on this latest development here? There have been a lot of twists and turns in the story, but now this. Yes, and in fact, this is kind of the second report regarding the weapon because we know the FBI already investigated it and issued its report. It's a slightly different in the FBI report. They conceded that it was possible maybe for it to have gone off if something had struck the gun. This report seems a little bit more maybe concise in the way it's explaining it, saying that it had to the trigger had to have been pulled in order for the gun to go off. And as you said, this is contradicts what Alec Baldwin said, that he never actually pulled the trigger. And so yet another kind of piece of evidence that the prosecution could possibly use to contradict that statement. What do you think it means for him? It's possible that, you know, they, we've already heard from the prosecutor in, um, from out of Santa Fe that they might bring charges. Um, like we know, they dismissed it without prejudice, which gives them the opportunity to bring charges back again. Uh, I also think that it's possible that they might wait for the trial that is already going forward, you know, with the armorer on the set, H Hannah Gutierrez. We know that she's being charged. And if I were the prosecutor, I would maybe wait and see how that trial went. And if there was kind of statements or evidence that came out there to make their case against Alec Baldwin even stronger. Uh, how do we ever determine, you know, with a high degree of certainty, what exactly happened, Dina? What do you think? Well, that, that's the problem. And I think maybe more will be revealed in the trial uh, for the armorer, because as we know, there was many people who handled that gun. And that's part of why it's so complicated what actually happened. But because she was in charge of the weapons, we might get a little bit more clarity when that goes to trial. But one reason why this um, report is so important is because evidently, you know, when the FBI was investigating it, according to the defense attorney of Alec Baldwin, the weapon kind of was maybe not destroyed, but was too hard at this point for their own expert to do a separate evaluation of the gun to be able to kind of contradict in court what these reports are saying. And I think that is a key problem for the prosecution. If it is indeed true that the reporting, the investigating of the gun made it unable to be kind of investigated again by his own expert, would create perhaps some wiggle room for there to be reasonable doubt about what actually happened in his handling of the gun and how much that contributed to the cinematographer's death. Yeah, because that's what it's all about, right? Uh, creating reasonable doubt and, you know, only he knows uh, what exactly happened, if he even knows. I mean, you know, they're filming a movie, things happen, you don't always remember exactly what went on. But that, that notion of reasonable doubt, uh, if they're able to, to bring that forward, that could be how this ends. And, and it could be why they don't decide to bring charges against him to begin with. Because if you do have a gun that his own expert can't properly look at, they will, his defense attorneys will certainly use that in court as saying, um, you know, it, he didn't pull it and we could have proved it, you know, or, and, or perhaps even not get his prosecution report thrown out because he never got a chance to defend himself properly by his own expert being able to look at the gun. So if the damage to the gun was so extreme that his expert cannot do their own analysis, it's possible, you know, the prosecution report doesn't come in. And, and so this is, I think, why um, a big reason why the prosecution did decide not to move forward, whether or not this report um, you know, gives them a, even more impetus to do so, I think, yes. But again, I think that they're going to have perhaps um, a, some evidence come out in the trial against the armorer that could also sway the prosecution's decision. And it's possible that we may wait and see what that outcome is.
Dina Dahl, legal and crime analyst, joining us today from Los Angeles. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thanks for having me.